Now, over 700 residents of Savia Fair and its environs are demonstrating over alleged kidnapping and killing of residents. Today's protest was triggered by another kidnapping of a resident, which happened two weeks ago during a festival in the area. Join News' Ivy Setoji is on that beat and joins us on the phone with more. Ivy, how serious are these killings and kidnappings? Uh, well, according to the residents, it's serious. And uh, what happened about two, three weeks ago was a man named George Komla Akoli uh, was kidnapped by a man uh, who claimed to be from Unkonya, uh, who named himself as Lucifer. According to them, a call was placed from Unkonya from the victims or the, the 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 victims phone and that he was kidnapped and killed that the residents should not bother to look for him and for the past 20 uh, 18 days they have not been able to find the man dead or alive they have placed calls to the police and nothing has been done about it now the residents over 700 residents uh, went on the street to demonstrate together with their chiefs and queen mothers they are asking the security service and the, 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 the government to do something about the situation. They are giving them 14 days uh, ultimatum or they advise themselves. Now, do we know any more about the identity about, of this Lucifer uh, you name? Yeah, well, according to them, uh, when the call, when, when they had the call from the phone, about three people had a call from the same man. And after that, the phone has been off things. And they have tried their best, went to the bushes to look for the man. Nothing has been done. The police, so they went to the police, and the police couldn't find the, uh, the alleged uh, Lucifer uh, who mm. placed the call to the family. So right now, they don't really know who the, 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 the man who called himself Lucifer is and where he is right now. But the call, according to them, was placed from Nkunya. So where are these demonstrators now, and what are they doing? They are currently at Jolupita in the West District. They came here to petition uh, the D.C. Uh, to, uh, to the president through the D.C. for who West. Right. Um, and so we are, you said earlier that they've given the authorities a two weeks ultimatum. Do we have any response from the authorities? Yes. The D.C. for who West, that is... And as um, uh, APAO uh, promised them that the president was going to uh, take their uh, petition and do something uh, just about the situation, that uh, the authorities, the security agencies, are also doing their best to make sure that the, the, their brother is, found, uh, is brought back dead or alive. Thank you very much, Ivy Setoji, for that update. We'll be taking you back to Savia Fair if there's a new development there. Now let's move on. And Gender, Children and Social Protection Minister, Madam Otiko Afisa Jaba, has been dragged to court for failing to do her national service. Two NDC MPs say Madam Otiko Jaba is unfit to be appointed as Gender Minister because she did not do national service. Here in the case in court today, Chief Justice Sophia Ekufu, who is presiding over the case, found it ridiculous for the two NDC MPs to have added honorable to their names on the writ, a title she describes as a dishonorable for the MPs to add to their names. Joining us is Joseph Akable, was in court, and joins us on the phone with more. Joseph, what transpired in court today? Joseph, if you can hear me, what transpired in court today? Well, our man on the ground, Joseph Akable, will soon be joining us with the latest on the, this case. We understand that um, the status of the lawyer for these two NDC MPs was called into question, on which basis a, de a decision was made by the courts. We'll be asking all those details and how those developments um, came about in court. You understand the case was thrown out of court by the Chief Justice Sophia Ekufu as a result of the status of the lawyer for these two NDC MPs. We'll be getting all the latest on that before the bulletin is over. Now, health officials vaccinating students at the Kumasi Academy are struggling to have students show up for the exercise. This is according to National President of PTA Ghana, Alexander Yao Danso. Vaccinating the students was necessitated by the outbreak of swine flu as a school, which claimed four lives. A number of students, a number of parents, I should say, consequently rushed to the school and took their wards home for fear of attracting the disease. 
This has made it difficult for health officials to get all the students to vaccinate. Mr. Danso is therefore imploring all parents to return their wards to the school for the exercise. Ohiming Teria has more. Four students of Kumaka have been killed and 40 others were hospitalized for what officials say is swine flu. Though the Ministry of Health and World Health Organization have supplied antibiotics, students who went home at the instance of their parents are yet to return. A team of medical experts have since been on campus to take clinical samples for further investigations. Mr. Danso led national executives of PTAs to interact with school authorities. He says parents have no basis keeping their children out of school when medical experts are on hand to provide services. I've asked my regional chairman to convene an emergency meeting with the parents, you know, um, from the unit schools, the parents of the unit schools, not that of uh, Kumaka alone, you know, from all the senior high schools in the region, so that uh, we, conv we convince them. Because uh, taking your ward back to the home, back to home, you know, wouldn't solve the problem. And uh, my, uh, my information is that they have been, when they went home, they have been sending them to the various hospitals. And why didn't you allow them to, uh, you know, stay here so that they administer the drugs they are giving to the other students? So we'll meet them soon and then we'll talk to them. Mr. Danso commends authorities for handling the issue with what he says is decorum. Uh, it may interest the public to, to know that teachers on campus were using their cars, their vehicles, to convey the students to their various hospitals without even collecting for it, without any fee. Few people can do what they have done. So I commend them, you know, and, 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 and they risk their lives, you know, getting in touch, getting in contact with those who have been affected or, you know, it's also a risk. But they took it. So not that nothing has been done. They are doing their best. They have done their best and they continue to do their best. We thank them for that. Meanwhile, the PTA and the Ghana Education Service have launched a nationwide insurance scheme with private insurance firm Saham Insurance for students. Each student would contribute seven Ghana cities a term as a premium. Mr. Danso explains the rationale for the scheme and benefits for the insured. We've had speed of accident on our roads, in our homes, in our schools, involving some of our students. And, you know, Kumaka, not only Kumaka, a lot of, uh, about two, three weeks ago, a car knocked down a student at West Africa Senior High School. We went to, I think, Ilo Krobo or Manya Krobo, and they had lost about three students. We went to Pukuwari, that is the beginning of, of the term. A second year science student, 17 year old boy, lost his life. You know, Sewa could be Sewa, uh, Afia could be Sewa, they also, you see, somehow on head. People don't even broadcast it, but we are losing. We are on the ground. We know what is happening. It is seven Ghana cities per term. That is the student and the sponsoring parent or guardian. If you have seven cities per term and you pay fine, if you want to pay for the year, that is okay. And in case of whether you pay it fully or partially, whatever happens to you, you you be you be you be you be you get the benefit. From Kumasi for Joy News. Ohim Interior reporting. Meanwhile, health officials in the region have been given some public education on the outbreak at uh, the pre uh, press conference uh, this morning. Ohim Interior joins me on the phone with more now. Ohim, at that press briefing, did they give any updates about the treatment of these students? Uh, Daniel, uh, can you come again? I am asking that at that press briefing this morning, where um, the public education on swine flu was given, was there any update on the treatment of the students? Yes, uh, there, there, there have been several uh, updates uh, to that effect. Uh, first, the regional health director, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Kojo Tinkrain, touched on the efforts that health authorities have made. And for now, he has ruled out uh, a po possible uh, vaccination for uh, students of Kumasi Academy. He says for now, they will concentrate on the medication of uh, antivirus to the students. One would know that uh, they have been able to make diagnosis of the condition, and that's H1N1. Uh, and he says, this is not new in Ghana. Uh, it's been one uh, of the commonest uh, and then responsible for most of the influences in Ghana. 
and he's been part of our seasonal influenza. And he says uh, because we needed two incubation periods, uh, two days, uh, to detect whether the condition, uh, the disease was coming down, the, the, the disease load was going up and down. Now it has been established that uh, the disease uh, has gone down. The number of cases reported in the various uh, hospitals uh, as it stands now uh, remains uh, 85, but 11 are uh, on admission. Uh, three at the KNUSD, one cat, and then five at Massey South, and two at Mencia uh, Government Hospital. So that is how come uh, health officials are informed that they have to, uh, for now, uh, uh, go and do with uh, the antivirus, uh, as I've already said, Daniel. So there will be no vaccinations of these students? And later, when I caught up with him, if that is uh, the, the stand of the ministry and that of the Ghana Health Services, uh, he says he been, that was his personal uh, experience as a public health expert, but we will have to wait for official announcement from uh, the minister. Uh, the, the minister announced earlier, indicating when they found that it was a H1N1 uh, 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 influenza that has been uh, affecting students of Kumasi uh, Academy. And there's another uh, mm. uh, important message he has given that, uh, as we can see, the H1 uh, influenza uh, strain, he says, was first reported uh, in April uh, 17, 2001. Mm. There are questions and all over. Right. Uh, 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 this H1 uh, endemic uh, mm. uh, should be uh, the cause of an uh, outbreak okay. uh, uh, on the Kumasi uh, Academy uh, campus. He says that uh, H1N1 is the cause of outbreak of uh, the H1N1, and then the students uh, died mm. mostly of the complications of the disease. And the swine flu. It's not the cause of H1N1. So initially, okay. there were suggestions that uh, because uh, there are pigs on the campus of Kumasi Academy, uh, people suspected that uh, they could be the carriers okay. or the trans transmitting the disease. But now it says that it has moved from uh, pigs to human, but now human right. uh, to human transmission, Daniel. Right. Thank you very much, Ohim Interior, for that update uh, from Kumasi. Let's go back to court now. Joseph Akable has joined us with the latest. Joseph, we understand the Chief Justice has thrown out the case against Gender Minister Otiko Afisa Jaba. Yes, uh, it followed from concerns that were raised by lawyers for the minister and led by Nick Fafakwenye here. And he had raised an initial objection saying that the lawyer for the two MPs, Godwin Ebijita Maklu, after the time of issuing the writ, did not have a valid license to practice as a solicitor general. And so he argued that this, the rate should be dismissed as a result of that. And the response from Gordon Tamaklo was to the effect that he issued a rate on February 9th at the time he had applied for renewal of his license and was yet to receive it. And he actually got a new license on February 20 at 2017. So at the time of issuing it, he didn't have it. So the chief just asked him a direct question that, did you have a license at the time he issued a rate? I replied, no. And in a unanimous decision, of the seven member panel, uh, they dismissed the rate, describing it as incompetent. Right. Uh, so, did they go into the merits of the case? Uh, not at all. So, this was just at the initial stages. And the information we are picking up from the two MPs is that they intend uh, to return to the court once again because they feel that uh, the substantive matter has not been looked into. Did they indicate when they'll do that? We don't know that for now, Daniel. Thank you very much, Joseph Akable, for that update from court. Uh, you're still watching Join News Today. My name is Daniel Daz. The story's gone by so far. We've taken you to Saviafa in the Volta region where residents there are demonstrating against killings and kidnappings in their area. Still to come, traders at Asafo Market are complaining of what they say is uncleared refuse in the area. All that and more. Stay tuned. Thanks for staying with us. Now, traders at Asafa Market are complaining of what they say is uncleared refuse in the area. Unscrupulous persons have turned a section of the market into a refuse dump, whilst people urinate into open and choked drains. They say repeated, they say repeated appeals to city authorities to address the challenge have proved futile. Many traders in Kumase prefer to occupy and transact business on streets and pavements rather than designated market centers. 
city authorities are overwhelmed by the situation at Kejitia, Adung PZ, Dr. Mensa, Alaba, and other commercial hubs in the city center taken over by traders. Ongoing reconstruction of the Kejitia project, which precedes the proposed rebuilding of the Kumasi Central Market has worsened the space situation. Besides the danger of humans competing with vehicles for space, the large volumes of people create insanitary conditions at risk of public health. Food is sold by choked, stinking, dumping side points. Those city authorities collect daily tolls. This is Dr. Mensa at the heart of Kumasi. What we are witnessing here is filth, waste, stench. The smell alone is so bad. The question you ask yourself is how do people live and work in an environment like this? They contribute to the filth, they stay within it, they smell it, and they live by it. But this is a place where KMA makes so much money in revenue collection, tax, and all that. But behind me here is a bad, muddy, filthy road which drivers ply every day. This site you're seeing here is an avalanche of filth created by the people who live here. So we are talking about the people and the attitude, an assembly that is not enforcing its bylaws to ensure that people do not commit, in quote, environmental suicide. This is where all the food vendors throw their liquid waste. Even though there is a dumping site around, people dump waste here, others urinate, and sometimes defecate here. We want them every day, but they come back. The KMA should do something about this, because we also pay levies here. A few meters from this filthy site area at Dr. Mensa is this cooking house. Asafa Market is undoubtedly the second largest market facility after Kumasa Central Market. From afar, things appear normal and decent. A close observation, however, reveals a woman removing her child's nappy while a man urinates behind a pile of tomato boxes. The man's urine and the baby's nappy will end up in the same pool. Located right at the center of Asafo, this drain might appear very small, but it is the Goliath of traders and commuters alike. Vegetable oil seller, a queer freema, Abdullah Musa, who sells onions, are a meter apart of each other. They are battling a common enemy. This place is smelly, she says. Sometimes we get headache. We eat here and we always live in fear of contracting some disease. You see them dumping fecal matter and urine in the drain. I believe you can smell it, she bemoans. The stench is overwhelming. The rain is our only respite, but for it, would die. The stench even drives customers away. Today, some of the waste cabbage waste to be carted by the collection agents. It's better, thanks to Mubarak and friends for the intervention. We clean them between 6 and 7 p.m. We pay the Miltakia guys every day to carry them to the dam site. Asafo is also home of the longest chain of cool stores in Kumase, and some rotten fish finds itself to a final destination here. After several calls to authorities, the central market can be considered clean. They are credited with quick garbage collection response. Joy news checks reveal waste trucks frequent the collection point, 
where many container full of waste wait to be lifted. The Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly's night cleaning seems to be making a difference in mitigating filth in the city. More, however, needs to be done for the Garden City to live up to its name. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Marketers are threatening to take legal action against the government over what they describe as deliberate attempts by government to sideline them in the rollout of the cylinder recirculation module. The LPG marketers have long expressed objections to the policy, which is supposed to be in full flow by November 2018, according to a presidential directive. The model involves the filling of LPG cylinders as designated refilling plants before distribution to customers as retail outlets. LPG marketers have consistently voiced their concerns with the policy, which they say can collapse their businesses and result in job losses. The association served governments with a deadline of after several attempts to have audience with the ministry failed. Lawyer for the association, Bernard Oredu, um, has been speaking to join News about these concerns um, about the association, which have been described by government as an attempt to frustrate the policy. But the Africa Center for Energy Policy believes the demands are legitimate. Let's get more from Executive Director for ASEP, Ben Boache. He joins us via telephone. Um, Mr. Boache, you believe the association has a case? Um, thanks for having me. I think the challenge is that I mean, when you have in a policy that has implications on many, many players uh, in our economy, um, you have to widely engage to ensure that all concerns can be addressed. So what we are seeing is a direct response to prescriptive policymakers. Mm. If you're only prescribing and you think it should work the way you are prescribing mm. it, then you have these kind of challenges. It means that you are not trying to engage to iron out the differences that uh, others may have. Mm. Now, perhaps if they, these guys are deeply engaged and their concerns are addressed, we may have a smooth transition uh, into whatever government wants the distribution of LPG uh, to look like. So in your view, we could have avoided this yeah. if they had been engaged? No, it's not even just about the LPG distributors. I mean, if you ask the ordinary consumer, they might just give you uh, a response that will not reflect a deeper understanding of how uh, uh, this whole policy will pan out, you understand? So, mm. uh, broader engagement. I mean, for even, uh, for example, the banks who give loans uh, some of these businesses to uh, 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 operate, you have to engage all of them. So, it, it, it goes beyond just even the operators. All of us have to be around the table to be engaged around it so that we can have a clear direction on what uh, we want to do so that once you implement it, it doesn't become an experiment but it will be a product of deeper consultation and a result of what we all uh, want to see in the industry. Else, you end up experimenting, and that becomes another uh, challenge in itself. I mean, these guys have also invested money. So if you are transitioning them into another uh, mode of distribution, that engagement ought to happen to see how you are able to absorb them into the, uh, uh, the new model uh, much more efficiently. Because if they suffer any losses, it's not just their pockets. Is the economy in general, is the banking sector that is also going to suffer because these loans are coming from you and I. Our money in the bank is what they have been given mm. uh, to set up those LPG uh, distribution uh, uh, outlets. So, if thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ben Boache, for joining us. He's the executive director for the Africa Center for Energy Policy, and this is where we draw the curtains on today's bulletin of Joy News today. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. I am Daniel Dutch.